guys, it's Kara from iStampin.com. Thanks for joining me on another one of our paper and ink sketches. Today we're going to be working with Sketch 15 and you can see here is the design and um, this PDF that you can find on my blog, uh, you are able to download it and you can see that it has all the measurements that you're going to need to recreate this sketch along with some tips. Uh, this is the card that I made to go along with the sketch. Now, um, if you follow uh, my sketch cards, very rarely do they look exactly like the sketch. I take some inspiration from it and uh, then I create my own card. So it's just a jumping off point. So this is the card that we're gonna be making today. I'm gonna to show you how to do it. It's really simple. It involves um, our brand new watercolor pencils along with the Dragonfly Dreams bundle. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is to cut a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock. This measures four and a quarter by 11. So this is gonna be a top folding card and you will want to get your Simply Scored scoring tool and we are going to score the card at a five and a half. So just take your stylus and just burnish it a, or just score it a couple of times. Grab your bone folder and we'll burnish that score mark. Okay, next what you're going, going to do is grab a piece of uh, watercolor paper. You can find our watercolor paper in our annual catalog. This measures just a quarter inch smaller than the card base, so this is four by five and a quarter. And this is where we're going to use our watercolor pencils. And we're gonna just do a really very simple, basic color water wash on here. So the colors that I've chosen for this are Bermuda Bay, Pacific Point, and Old Olive. And this is a very simple technique. I honestly, I really don't have a whole lot of experience with watercolor pencils, but I know of this technique. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just gently rub the pencils on the watercolor paper and then I'm going to use my aqua painter to blend the colors all in. So I'm going to start with my lightest uh, blue which was Bermuda Bay. Now I'm adding some Pacific Point and then I'm going to finish it off with some Old Olive. So just gently rub that and I'll come up a little bit. Go over here. Okay. All right, and I'm going to be using our aqua painter to blend in the colors. And if you haven't seen this before, this is a watercolor brush. So you can see the, the brush end right here. And then this is a barrel that's filled with water. And what you do is you just unscrew the top and then just fill that up with, you know, just water from your faucet. And then you'll just squeeze the brush end until you see like a little pool of water and that just lets you know um, how wet the tip is. And I always like to have like a paint, uh, excuse me, a paper towel. <laughs> and you know, if it gets too wet, then you can just uh, dry off the tip end just a little bit. So make sure I've got this, okay. So then what you're gonna do is just come in and just kind of, if you need to like squeeze the water, you can just, or if you need a little bit more water, just squeeze the barrel and that will release more water. And what I did for this is I wipe off um, the brush tip and then, so I'm, I'm washing the colors individually and brushing off my tip in between and then um, I'll go back and kind of blend it. I found that that gave me a little bit more control of how much color I wanted blending, especially with the blue and the green. I didn't want to make that like a muddy color. Okay, and then let's do the old olive. And you can see, I mean, this is very basic. You can see some of the blues coming down there, which is fine. All right, and then ideally you're gonna let that dry. If you wanna take the time and let it dry on its own, you can. Um, I'm gonna just mop this up just a little bit. Okay, and you can do that if there's some spots that you don't care for. Just take your paper towel and you can mop that up. Um, like I was saying, you can either let this dry on its own or you can use your heat tool and you can speed that up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Thank you. 
Okay, and when it dries, even if you if it dries naturally, the um, the watercolor paper does have a tend tendency to curl, which is completely normal. So don't be um, concerned about that. All right, so what I did here with this card, I don't know if you noticed it, but I've got like some little water watercolor um, splatters, and I wanted to add that onto my card. So what I've done is I have. Uh, so what I've done is I've taken my pool party reinker and I just put a few drops. This is just a little empty button case that I like to keep, um, which is like perfect for doing this kind of technique. So anyway, so I put a couple of drops of pool party ink in there because I wanted something a little bit lighter than the colors that I used already. Um, put water, mixed it up, and what I'm going to do is I've just got you know a paintbrush laying around, and I'm going to actually flick that onto the cardstock and let me go ahead and just use my paper towel from earlier and that hopefully will catch the mess that I may make. So what you do is just get your brush wet and then just take the bristles and just flick all over the card and you can do as many or as, as little as you want. So that looks good. And again, you can let this air dry or you can use your heat tool to speed it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my heat tool to speed up the drying time. Okay, so that looks like it's dried enough. And the one thing that I absolutely love about this technique is that no two cards are alike. So you can see here the difference already um, between the, this, the sample card that I make and then the card that I'm making here on camera. Um, the intensity is a little bit darker, the specs are a little bit different, so I love doing something where a card is completely unique. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is do our stamping, and like I said, I am using the Dragonfly Dreams um, bundle. We'll be doing some die cutting here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and use this uh, sentiment right here. It says, thanks for the smile and everything else. I thought that was really nice, and I'm going to be inking that up in our Memento Tuxedo Black ink and just putting it right uh, down there in the bottom corner. So I'm going to get my paper piercing mat because this is a photopolymer stamp. I'm going to try to get that as straight as or try to bend that, kind of get that bow out as much as possible. All right, so let's go ahead and ink up our stamp. And then just come down here on the bottom right. Okay, that looks good. All right, so I'm going to put this off to the side and let that ink dry completely before we move on. So let's go ahead and do our die cutting. You are going to want to get out your um, Detailed Dragonfly Thinlets, and you can see uh, there's some of the other images. But for this card, we're going to be using this fun, uh, the little multi-dragonflies uh, die cut. So you're going to want to get a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock. I think this is cut down to about like three by four or four and a quarter, something like that. So that's just large enough for that to fit onto. And let me grab my Big Shot. Okay, so get your magnetic platform, acrylic plate, and let's put the cardstock down and then put the dragonflies. This is a detailed thinlet, so, or a detailed framelit, so what I like to do is to run it through twice. Just makes removing the um, paper a lot easier. Okay, and I've got my die cut brush to remove this. And what you do is just rub, and you can see how easy this just pops out. Super easy. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and bring our card base uh, and our panel back in. What we're going to do is we're going to tie some ribbon around this, and I'm using our Bermuda Base stitched ribbon. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to tie this around the card base. I think that should be enough. 
and in my sample I had the knot on the left side. I think I'm going to do it on the right side for this card. I think I got more than enough ribbon. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, grab your ribbon scissors and just cut off the ends. Okay, and if I need to cut those more, I can in just a minute. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put this down on the card base first before I put my die cut on there. And I'm going to go ahead and use tear and tape uh, just because this panel is a little... is a little wavy from the watercolor so this will make sure that it flattens out and doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to put about four strips on the back side. And if y'all haven't, um, if y'all aren't aware of this, I have started, I've done done four episodes now. I'm doing a Facebook live event every Thursday at 11 o'clock Eastern time. So yesterday I did um, uh, a live event, but I wanted to tell you about the event that I'm doing next Thursday. So what I like to do is just burnish the ends. It kind of, it makes removing the paper a little bit easier and then just use your paper piercer or pair of scissors just to lift up the backing strip. But anyway, um, next Thursday, which is the 23rd, I'm going to be doing a special Facebook Live. So the event is going to be a class. And I'm going to be making four cards. I'm using the Cool Treats Bundle uh, along with the uh, Tasty Treats Specialty Designer Series Paper. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll be making the cards live and the matching envelopes. But you will be able to receive the kit for free with a participating purchase. So I just wanted you to be aware of that so that you can go ahead and put that on your calendar. Um, the best thing to do is to head on over to Facebook and um, head on over to my Facebook page, which is iStampin', and I will link that um, on the blog as well as in YouTube on the uh, in the description box. And you'll want to like my page and then make sure that you um, click on that you want to be alerted for notifications when I go live um, and you'll be able to watch it live. Um, I do uh, upload the live, the iStampin' Live videos to YouTube. So if for any reason, if you're working, um, you're unable to make the uh, that time, you can watch it um, in the future. Or you can watch it at your convenience. And that ribbon is not right. So I'm going to, it's driving me crazy. I'm going to try to undo this and knot it back up properly. Hey guys, I realized when I was editing today's video that I forgot to hit the record button after I retied the ribbon. So I apologize for that. I hate when that happens, but um, really there wasn't much left to do to the card. The only thing that I did is I used my fine tip glue pen to adhere the butterfly die, uh, the dragonfly die cuts onto the card. And uh, this takes a little bit of time to set up. So what I would recommend doing is just getting some of your heavier acrylic blocks lay that on top of your card for about five minutes and then everything should be um, ready to go so I hope you like today's project again you can find the sketch on my blog you'll be able to download the PDF and if you have any questions or comments about the project today just let me know I hope that you will join me for uh, I stamp and live next Thursday and give this video a thumbs up bye guys have a great weekend